Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Tutorials in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. .1. In this video I'm going to explain how to install and hopefully run the Space Shuttle with all the realisms and this is by special request in the comments and it's not easy but it's doable. I usually use the Space Shuttle in 1.3.1 and that's because I use this uh, mod that you see here uh, by DECU, um, the Space Shuttle system and as you can see, it was for 1.2.2 originally, and uh, I used it in 1.3.1 successfully, sort of. Uh, but uh, previously, uh, I was using the CSS shuttle. That was the smoothest one. That was for 1.1.3. And uh, since then, of course, if you want to use more recent versions of KSP, well, it's a little bit more interesting. So DECU's mod here has been updated. And that is by Radar here. Radar has created a 1.4.5 version. And that has subsequently been made friendly with RSSRO in 1.3.1, though I don't use this version. And also updated for 1.7.x. Now that's not quite 1.8.1, but it's close enough. Now you cannot use something earlier than 1.7 with a 1.7 or later thing because they updated the version of Unity they were using for Kerbal Space Program and the shaders get broken. So the old shaders, the, the, the shuttle would look very weird if you tried to use the old DECU shuttle in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. So we have to use this one and I'll show you how to install it. So we're going with the installation that I created for the tutorial so far. And we are going to get this latest version with modified uh, boosters. And it's Space Shuttle 1.0.0. Okay, download, direct download. I've already downloaded it. So I've got it here, Space Shuttle 1.0.0. And we'll take a look at it. Game data. Remember, always try and find the game data folder. So inside game data, we want, we've got this fire spitter. Uh, JSI, KSP wheel, and the space shuttle. Fire spitter is to, in this case, change the textures on the space shuttle. So you can change it from Atlantis to uh, Columbia Challenger, Discovery, Endeavor, etc. I think even Enterprise. So JSI is the raster prop monitor, which is for the internal cockpit. Uh, KSP wheel is exactly what it sounds like. It's a wheel plugin. And then there's the shuttle folder. So we're going to just get all those. Now there's a quirk here. Plus side. Plus side is that Realism Overhaul already has the configurations for this mod. And it is under this space shuttle system. These work with this mod. So that's good. Um, they are not the same as the configurations I use in 1.3.1 because uh, those were for the old DECU shuttle and these are new. Uh, these, I guess, are uh, thanks to this RSS RO friendly version. I don't know if this is the person who actually did them. But um, the problem is, and this is just the first of many little things that we're going to have to deal with. See this shuttle texture switch? Remember, we have this ability to switch textures now. If we take a look at this, the it points to space shuttle system. That's the folder. And when you take a look at our folder structure in game data, we don't have that folder. <laughs> so either in this file, you change this to say space shuttle, and not only space shuttle, but the point to the texture folder. Here are the textures. Or you take these, you copy them, go to game data, new, new folder. Create a folder called Space Shuttle System and paste them in it. And then they'll be able to find these. See this cabin, cabin, that's that one, and discovery, there's discovery, and so forth. So you'll have these textures available, and so it'll be able to switch to them properly. So, yeah, that is something you're going to have to do. There's something else. At the beginning, when you uh, load up KSP, it will tell you that this KSP wheel is for the wrong version. And that is because it is. We in, This uh, mod was for 1.7. We were in 1.8. So find KSP wheel on the forums. I'll link 
uh, this page, this page in the video description, and I'll link the KSP wheel page as well. Uh, so this is what we need. We click on the, Git actually, I'll just uh, link the GitHub. So I already have it open here, but anyway, uh, GitHub recompile for 1.8. Uh, make sure you get that version. I've got it. So let me just make sure KSP wheel. This is this version. Very good. So in this, we have the old version. We must delete and we get this new version and extract. Okay, so that is the first little complication. And at this point, we can start up Realism Overhaul and KSP and see what else we need to do because there are other things we need to do. Okay, I think uh, we might need to update Fire Spitter as well, looks like. All right, let me uh, pause this loading and get Fire Spitter. As far as I know, Fire Spitter hasn't changed a whole lot since the old days, uh, but here we go. Fire Spitter 7.15 uh, for KSP 1.8, so that will certainly do. I'm not used to having to get Fire Spitter per se because a lot of other mods require it and they usually come with it. But anyway, deleting the old Fire Spitter. And here we have the new Fire Spitter. But okay, so this Fire Spitter has a whole lot of parts that you don't need. You really only need the plugin, uh, but it's up to you. The, the parts are all airplane parts. So if you want to do airplane things, you might want to keep them. And in fact, I think later on, I'm going to be doing videos on how to make space planes and your own custom space shuttle. We're not going to cover that in this video, but I would like to cover that going forward. So I'm probably going to just keep these. The biplane parts are probably not necessary, but um, I'll just keep the airplane parts for now. Okay, so while we're updating plugins, we should probably get Raster Prop Monitor as well. It, it too is a plugin. Now, it's been recently adopted by a new maintainer, so hopefully things will work out right. And so Raster Prop Monitor 0.31.3, I believe I have that already. So 0.31.3. So once again, maybe just at the beginning, you should just only unzip the Space Shuttle folder and just get all these mods individually afterwards. So the JSI folder goes away and raster prop monitor game that, uh, nope, not the licensed JSI gets dropped in here. So you're just replacing all of those with their 1.8.1 versions. Okay, now we can restart. Okay, we are here in the SPH because we're going to look at the orbiter first. This is something you should always do to verify that it is looking proper. So first we have the, we can type in shuttle up there and we have the shuttle crew module. Okay, and it's got some cameras, which you can see there. And that's the blue line, uh, blue cones. And then we want the main fuselage, this cargo bay. And then we want the engine mount, like so. And then we can put on the wings, the left wing, the right wing left elevon and pull down alt to click and then right elevon okay and then we should have the OMS pods the right OMS pod and the left OMS pod Okay, and then the first sort of problematic part, well, there, there are all sorts of little problems, but uh, the first seriously problematic part is this vertical stabilizer with parachute. And that's because for some reason the configuration in Realism Overhaul decides to rotate it by 90 degrees, <laughs> um, which isn't helpful when its node that's supposed to attach is like that, right? So that's not good. But then this upper node is in the right place. I I think I'll try and fix that and I'll give you my configurations for that but for now you can just surface mount it and it'll end up in the right place as long as you have snap on you need to rotate it manually of course 
And then once you've done that, now uh, maybe tweak it a little bit forward. Maybe a little bit down. Uh, no, that, that's probably fine. Okay, and then we need the rudder. So, tail control surface, it's called. It's also rotated wrong, but it'll snap in there. And this one actually has the, the split rudder, so that's good. You'll probably want that. And now, it also has the silt spot on, on the top right there. That's that pod there. Uh, only one shuttle actually had that. That's Columbia. So we might as well paint this as Columbia. I haven't figured out how to get that off yet. Columbia, of course, did the was the first shuttle. Did the first shuttle launch. And the first five shuttle launches. So we can change the paints. And we can see current texture Columbia. To get the right one. I, I don't know if Columbia is supposed to have the name here and here. I forget. But um, here, next paint. Uh, we want the old one that matches best. On the wing as well, we want Columbia. And then here. They're all subtly different. Well, uh, Challenger is different, Columbia is different, and the uh, other three are sort of similar. Uh, but Columbia has a distinctive extra tiles all over the place. The rudder also has more paint jobs. Challenger, Columbia. And you can see more of the black tiles there. So yeah, so this would be Columbia. And now we want to put the engines. Uh, I have some choices here because Real Engines has its own, own SSMEs. And I actually use these Real Engine SSMEs on my 1.3.1 .1 shuttle. And then there's this one. And this is the stock engine, uh, the stock vector modified as an RS-25. So you got three choices. We'll go with the one that comes with this mod first. So there, there, and there. But you'll want to tuck them in. And for reference for how much you should tuck them in, get this body flap. <laughs> the shuttle body flap, don't forget that, that's important. But you can see they sort of stick out beyond the body flap. That probably means that they're they're too big. So we're going to have snap on and not uh, go in two notches. Fortunately, at least they're tilted right. So two notches in, and now they look reasonably protected by that body flap. Another thing, right click on them. And the engine, you got all sorts of different variants of the RS-25. And depending on what mission you want to run, you'll have to configure it properly. But we'll go for the ultimate version, the RS-25D. Um, the other two configurations here are don't really exist yet. So I don't even know. That G seems overly optimistic and not a thing i don't know uh but uh yeah i don't know where that comes from but rs 25d will suit you fine and now we need the oms engines so that's the aj10 190 uh don't get this one this is the orion this is comes from uh real uh, real engines but we want the one for the shuttle and so we have two of these and uh, a little quirk. Okay, um, they've got it configured as an AJ-10-190, and that's not exactly how it's configured for the shuttle because it's got mixed oxides of nitrogen instead of nitrogen tetroxide. The shuttle used nitrogen tetroxide as its oxidizer, so it's a little bit wrong, but it's not even worth changing, really, I don't think. So one thing that you might have to do or want to do is make sure it's pointing through the center of mass properly, they're tilted up a little bit, but they also need to be tilted in the blue axis right here. So hold down shift to go in five degree increments and maybe two steps. And then this one, two steps the other way. And then also tweak it so that it is not interfering with the RCS pod. So maybe one step this way. And that will get you pointed through the center of mass of each one. 
Okay, so that is now a shuttle, and it is a good shuttle. But we've got the center mass here. Where is the center of lift? Ah, well, there's a problem. So why, why is that happening? That's because of a quirk in the configurations again. Uh, sorry, it's not in the RO configurations. It's actually in the original configuration for the part. Uh, you can see this COL offset that moves the center of lift back 25 meters. Well, that's why it's that far back, because this configuration has moved it back and down. That's that uh, six meters there. Uh, the, it's sort of reversed in the Z axis. But yeah, it's moved back here, and I'll I'll edit that in my own realism overall configurations. I don't want to edit the original configuration for the part because um, that gets dicey when you try and update the mod and everything like that. So yeah, you can see it's COM is also offset. I'll, I'll be fiddling around with those quite a lot to find the right number. But yeah, let us proceed with discussing how to put together the shuttle first. Okay, but we have our orbiter. Let's save it. And we can we can switch editors just like that, and suddenly it's here. So vertical, and what we want now is the external tank directly. So slot that on, like so. And then we need the SRBs. Now this is weird. Um, so I don't know how exactly they expected us to have the SRBs go. Obviously, we need them in symmetry across the the external tank, and this should probably be, and uh, the arrows are up here. Should probably be around there-ish to start off, but how we are going to put the boosters on, I don't know. And also, for some reason, they decided not to have the boosters that were part of the original DECQ mod. So I personally would directly go and get the boosters from that mod and copy it into the folder and just replace what they have here. But I'll show you what they have here. And this is, this is the, so you want to look for the RSRM. Uh, reusable solid rocket motor. That's what that stands for. You do not want the RSRMV. That is the five segment one that goes on SLS. Now we can attach them like this, uh, but you're gonna have to move them up. And there's another problem. They've got this really bright nose cone down there. But anyway, uh, about there we'll do. And then you, you might have to look at reference photos. Uh, actually, you know, maybe lining up the top of this with the top of that white part is good. Like, like that. That's probably a good reference. All right. And then we've got the nose cones, which is the problem because we've occupied the top node there. So we are going to surreptitiously use the radial attachment point. I think that's close enough. And then once again getting the shuttle parts, we see this SSRB nose cone. But it doesn't look quite the way I'd like them. And actually the nose cone, you can get a better one from the Space Launch Systems mod, is the one I use in 1.3.1. So actually the SLS booster nose cone looks the best, at least in my estimation. So, but we, we can use these like so, but I'm not sure it's going to separate properly. We've got extra separatrons. You see this main separation motors right. I don't know which direction right is relative to, but uh, I'll assume shuttle facing like this, in which case got it like that. Um, I wonder if it should be rotated around. I guess it really is like this, which means they're pushing up, which is weird, but at least they're pushing away from the shuttle. Okay, and the left ones. There's a Im there's sort of a buried node that they go on to. Oh, shoot. I didn't want symmetry. 
because they're different on each side. Left one? Okay, there we go. Alright, but that's not gonna be enough to separate them off. You gotta have to put some other separatrons somehow. And just for testing purposes, I'm going to um, put a set here. We don't really want to attack the shuttles, so we're going to make sure that they're sort of like that. Though actually the shuttle did get blasted by the, separ the nose separatrons. It's just a little bit. They could see the flames from the cockpit. These need to go on in symmetry. And we'll see how well that does for us. Okay. So this is properly configured. Except we need a payload. And we'll have a test payload of its maximum capacity. First we'll have a docking port. A common berthing mechanism. And another common berthing mechanism. And finally some sort of tank and probably a procedural tank would be best so we can get the right mass oh, oh I always put the payloads in the back of the bay you'll have the docking port arrangement in the front of the bay that's a whole separate story about how you get that though if you uh, get the original deq mod that has the original dock uh, docking arrangement and also a space lab space hab and other sort of things that this version of the mod does not have. Not sure they'll look proper though. So we have a tank here and I fill it with av gas for testing. And the maximum capacity for the shuttle is 24 tons. It could probably carry a little bit more than that, but 24 tons will do. So that's our test mass. We don't have a cannon arm yet, that doesn't come with the mod. The shuttle was held down on the boosters, so... That's where we'll put the launch clamps, and now all sorts of staging stuff. First of all, there are little doors on the bottom of the engine mount. So you say open ET doors and you need to have some way of closing them. So we're going to start getting some action groups done. Uh, so I usually use action group 7 for that. So toggle ET door. Action group 8 I use to turn on and off the OMS engines. So toggle engine toggle engine. Action group 9 is the gimbal on the SSMEs, so toggle gimbal, toggle gimbal, toggle gimbal. And action group 10 is the activate deactivate for the SSMEs. Other things you can do are the fuel cells, which are in the back here. So you'll probably want to, um, it doesn't show the fuel cells right now, but once we're in flight, you can start the fuel cells. Um, you can have an action group for opening a cargo bay. Uh, why you would want to open the hatch up here, I don't know, but if you want to open that hatch, that opens. The fuel cells use hydrogen and oxygen, and so do the SSMEs. So either you want to lock these, or you want to have the fuel priority really low and just remember to shut off the SSMEs before uh, separating off the external tank, otherwise they might try and use this fuel. So there's that. And then there are the RCS covers here. You see there's all these uh, shrouds above the RCS ports, so you'll want to disable these. Now there's an extra shroud here, there's a fifth shroud, but I think those should be closed off. I don't even know why those are there, but so yeah. While you're at it, you might as well activate all the RCSs in here, otherwise they might accidentally pop off those shrouds that we don't want to have pop off. And same here, make sure all the RCS is enabled before launch. Okay, anything else? Well, 
control surfaces. Uh, nobody said that the shuttle was going to be easy. Now, we want these control surfaces to handle our yaw and roll. Uh, sorry, pitch and roll, not yaw. So no yaw there. Let's not have them confused or anything. The body flap only handles uh, pitch and the rudder only handles yaw. Ah, that's another thing you could uh, action group though. Uh, it should be on brakes. I don't know what the left wing and right wing or crew module brakes are. But, okay, it is on brakes as far as... Oh, well, that'd be landing gear, right? Those are those brakes. Uh, but we've got a toggle air brake here for the tail control surfaces on the brake action group. So that's fine. So, we've got all that. The last thing you might want to consider is putting separatrons on the external tank. We won't do that. Uh, we'll do an RCS maneuver to separate it off, but that's something to think about. Okay, let me save... And we're going to sort out the staging here. So, get the SSMEs first. Okay. And then the SRBs with the launch clamps. And then SRE separation with the motors at the bottom, the separatrons we added, and the nose cone separation motor. And then finally, the OMS engines. and the external tank separation. Okay. Are we there yet? Well, let's find out. Now, I'm going to demonstrate why I usually launch the shuttle with KOS. And that is because it's really hard to control it otherwise. Um, especially during the roll. I'll try my best. But, here we go. Ignition. That's a weird sound, but okay. And launch. So, I'm actually going to use E to try and do the roll as carefully as I can. Uh, okay, I've got the joystick now. <laughs> uh, 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 okay. Uh, let's see how smart ASS deals with this. We should already be at a much lower pitch, by the way. The shuttle pitches over very, very, very quickly because it has a high thrust to weight ratio initially. Fortunately for you, it's not likely to flip over. It's got these huge aerodynamic surfaces that basically keep it steady. And it's also got the gimbling on the SRBs, which is very powerful. Now when designing your own shuttle, you're going to have to figure out how they got the balance right here. And we'll talk about that in a separate video. You can see how quickly it gains speed. And actually you should have... I should have throttled down and throttled up again. You throttle down at around 7 kilometers and throttle up again at about 15 kilometers. That's to reduce stress on the vehicle. So we'll hold at uh, 30 degrees pitch here for SRB separation. And the thing to know about the SRB separation is it happens when the thrust is at 400 kilometers. Uh, sorry, kilonewtons. 400 kilonewtons or about 2 minutes and 3 seconds into launch. Now, it seems like we've hit 400 kilonewtons early. Ooh. Well, anyway. 
We're gonna have to work on the separation, obviously, but at least it didn't hit anything important. But yeah, the thrust tail off on these is much faster than I would expect them to be. And much faster than they were in 1.3.1. In 1.3.1 you would st still see little flames coming out of the SRBs as you should. So let's take a look at this. Uh, our time to apoapsis is way high right now. In this orientation, note that the engines are actually pointing at a uh, about 10 degree pitch, even if you're level. So if we get to zero degrees here, they're still at a 10 degree pitch. So you need to keep that in mind. They're actually pointing much closer to the prograde vector here than our nose is. And then if you roll over, as I have my KOS script do, then the opposite is true. They're pointing down, so your nose will have to be up. If you roll over, your nose has to be 20 degrees higher than if you're inverted like this. So let's roll over. And you can see the apoapsis is going down now, which we don't want. So now we have to pitch up. The delta V reading on the stock delta V is woefully incorrect. We've got 5,000 or so meters per second here. Should be enough to deliver our payload to the correct orbit. We can see that the electric charge is going down, so I'm going to start the fuel cells. I have no idea what the APU does in this context, but fuel cells, I understand, you should only need two to supply power. That's fine. We're actually going down still. I probably shouldn't have even rolled over. <laughs> I'm gonna bring up surface info, our vertical speed, and yeah, we're gonna need to pull up a little bit more than that. Unlike a normal sort of uh, trajectory, we do not want the vertical speed to be close to zero. And uh, normally with a rocket, by the time you uh, get close to orbit, you want the vertical speed to be zero. We don't need that in this situation. And that's because we want to leave the external tank on a suborbital trajectory. So we want a lopsided orbit. And we would thrall down. Note that the bottom of the throttle range is actually 66% for the SSMEs. They don't throttle all the way down to zero. Okay. Control the orbit a bit. And shut down. So 375 by 33. That should be okay for the external tank. We shut down the SSMEs, stop them from gimbling, so Action Group 9, uh, start up the OMS engines, could be done earlier, uh, start the RCS, uh, separate, and then K, we want to do K for the separation maneuver. You can see we only have a small amount of Delta V in the shuttle itself, so you have to plan pretty well. We're looking at 400-ish meters per second here. I'll have to verify whether it's got the right amount. I didn't even talk about the dry mass of the shuttle. Keep in mind though we're carrying our maximum payload. How much fuel do we have left in here? Not a whole lot. So yeah. All right, opening the cargo bay. I don't know if activating the radiator does anything practical. But yeah, we would want to get to apoapsis and then circularize. But we know that this shuttle right now is not balanced for re-entry. We saw the center of mass and center of lift in the SPH. And I've done, like I said, I've uh, edited the configurations a little bit, but I don't think I'm satisfied with it. 
we'll do some testing and I'll show you that and then I'll put the configurations in that video after I've done some more testing with it so we're just lifting up periapsis we could point directly pro prograde you don't have to be like this everything works out very nicely on this shuttle right now but the whole landing business and whether the landing gear works Oh, I forgot to press 7 for those flaps. Yeah, you want to close those. For reference, you need at least 100 meters per second to be able to deorbit. That's deorbit burn. Even if you've got the the PID, the controller configured really nicely, you probably want at least 30 meters per second during re-entry to handle the shuttle. So we're talking about you got 400 total. You gotta need to use some of that 400 to get to uh, to circularize your orbit. As you can see, we're using probably between 50 and 100 meters per second to do that, and then you need to reserve no less than 130 meters per second to get back down. You don't have a whole lot to work with beyond that. Granted, that's with a maximum payload here. So, so all right. We've gotten it to orbit and re-entry is going to be a bit of another business, but I've explained how to install it, put together, and launch it. We'll take care of the rest of the stuff in another video. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.